There will come soft rains and the smell of the ground and swallows circling with their shimmering sound and frogs in the pools singing at night and wild plum trees in tremulous white. Robins will wear their feathery fire whistling their whims on a low fence wire and not one will know of the war not one will care at last when it is done not one would mind neither bird nor tree if mankind perished utterly and spring herself when she woke at dawn would scarcely remember that we were gone a very good afternoon to one and all present here and welcome to the English exhibition. The exhibition has been made possible because of the constant collaboration of the very enthusiastic students of class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th with the assistance and guidance of their very hardworking and talented teachers. So, without any further ado, let's begin. The first video is made by the collaboration of class 11th and 12th students, wherein they will be showcasing the use of various animal motifs in literature. So, let's begin. In the thickets as green as emerald, the tiger roared from far away. This roar wasn't out of ferociousness, but pain and affliction. Are, where is that tigress going? You all know now I need to get its hide by any means this morning. Where is that tigress? There it is. Let us go and catch that tigress. Hey, don't. Please, spare me. I did not cause any harm to you. Then why are you being so inhumane to me? Are, you shut up. You are nothing but an animal. I own this planet. This planet belongs to me. I am the human being. You are a mere animal. Do not intrude in my business. Do you understand? Before you humans, it was us, the animals who resided on this planet. Didn't we give you the space to build your homes, to cook your own food, to raise your generations, to make a happy life? This is what he gave us in return. Wait. Today, I will narrate the story. Not only of my life, but of millions of others like me. There are humans who are not like you. They care for us and are voicing out our rights. Tigers forever. May there always be tigers in the jungle and tall grass. May the tiger's roar be heard. May his thunder be known in the land, at the forest pool, by midnight. May he drink and raise his head, scenting the night wind. May he crouch low in the grass when the herdsmen pass, and slumber in the dark caverns when the sun is high. May there always be tigers. But not so many that one of them might be tempted to come in search of meal. The poem has been written by Ruskin Bond. The Tiger by William Blake Tiger, tiger, burning bright In the forest of the night What a mortal hand or eye Could frame thy fearful symmetry In what distant deeps or skies Burned the fire of thine eyes On what wings dare he aspires What the hand dare seize the fire and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart begin to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright In the forest of the night 
what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? So, these spectacular poets have always tried to make a difference in the world where cruelty has claimed the pinnacle. This concept is not static but ever growing. Many new poets and knowledgeable people continue to draw attention to the deplorable condition of wildlife, especially tigers. We should constantly make efforts to make people aware of such ideas and try to become the apt stewards for this planet and its creator. What a wonderful video it was. Now we have the students of class 9th B4 and B5 on the declamation of famous environmentalists. My name is Rinda Sinha and I'm from class 9B5. Today I'm going to declimate a young and famous environmentalist named Greta Thumbo. So before I declimate a speech given by her, I would like to throw some spotlight on her. Her full name is Greta Tintin Eleonora Erwin Thumbo. She is the world's youngest environmentalist who was born in Sweden on 3rd January in the year 2003. Her awards include Reckel Carson Prize, Ambassador of Conscience Award, Right Livelihood Award, and many other awards. Also, she was honored by Dr. Honoris Causa and University of Mons. She wrote books like No One Is Too Small to Make a Difference, Scenes from the Hurt, etc. So now I'm going to declimate a speech given by her at the 2018 United Nations Climate Change Conference, and here I go. My name is Greta Thumbo. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Sweden. I speak on behalf of climate justice now. Many people say that Sweden is just a small country and it doesn't matter what we do. But I have learned that you are never too small to make a difference. And if a few children can get headlines all over the world by just not going to school, then imagine what we all could do together if we really wanted to. But to do that, we have to speak clearly no matter how uncomfortable that may be. You only speak of green eternal economic growth because you are too scared of being unpopular. You only talk about moving forward with the same bad ideas that got us into this mess, even when the only sensible thing to do is pull the emergency brake. You are not matured enough to tell it like it is, even that burden you leave to us children. But I don't care about being popular. I care about climate justice and living planet. Our civilization is being sacrificed for the opportunities of a very small number of people to continue making enormous amount of money. The year 2078, I would celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they will ask me about you. Maybe they will ask, why didn't you do anything while there still was time to act? You say you love your children above all else, and yet you are stealing their futures in the front of their very eyes. Until you start focusing on what needs to be done, rather than what is politically possible, there is no hope. We cannot solve a crisis without treating it as a crisis. We need to keep the fossil fuels in the ground, and we need to focus on the equity. And the solutions within the system are so impossible to find. Maybe we should change the system itself. We have not come here to beg the world leaders to care. You have ignored us in the past and you will ignore us again. We have come here to let you know that the change is coming, whether you like it or not. We have run out of excuses and we are running out of time. The real power belongs to the people. Thank you. What a creative video. Now moving on with the third video, here we have self-composed slogans on environment by the students of class 9. There's a pleasure in the pathless world. There's a rapture in the lonely shore. There is a society where none intrudes, but the deep sea and music in it roars. I love the man not less, but the nature more. It is time to rise and save our mother earth. We present to you a beautiful amalgamation of self-composed slogans. Join us in this journey to conserve our environment. I want to protect the environment. I want to make a world where environment needs not to be protected. Don't let a clean environment just be a dream. Make it come true. Earth is going to be mean. 
if you turn go green. Later, makes a plan with her. Imagine if trees gave off Wi-Fi signals, we would be planting so many trees, we'd probably save the planet too. So bad they only produce the oxygen we breathe. Climate is changing. Why aren't we? Small acts multiplied by millions of people can transform the whole world. Stop denying. The world is dying. Be clean, not mean. Be warm, not global warm. Be healthy, not wealthy. Be the change, not strange. Human change, not climate change. Global warming is not cool. What we save. Save, sir. In the forests and mountains, animals do not leave trash. Humans do. Please behave like animals. Clean up your mess. With love, Mother Earth. Now that was an outstanding performance. Moving on, we have the students of class 11th A1 and A2 for haiku composition inspired by nature poets. Poetry is what touches the heart and nourishes the soul. It is an acme of excellence through words inexplicable. Today we bring to you a medley of paintings curated from the Romantic era and Japanese haikus to resonate the love of nature. So let's begin. English Activity, a collective contribution by 11th A1 and A2. Types of short poetic forms. There are many different types of short poems, each with their own set of rhyming rules and structures. Haiko, Tanka, Siju, Acrostic, Sinkwa, Limerick, Sonnet. Haiko, short form poetry, originated in Japan, written in three lines in English, requires three phrases with a cutting word, follows 575 five rules. 11th A2 and A1 is proud to present a collection of haikus representative of Mother Nature. The paintings chosen are from the Romantic era in the literature 1800 to 1850. Emergence of Haiku Haiku originated as an opening part of a larger Japanese poem called Renga. These haiku written as an opening stanza were known as Hoku. Haiko was given its current name by the Japanese writer Masaoka Shiki at the end of the 19th century. In the 17th century, two masters, Matsuo Basho and Uejima Onitsura, arose who elevated Haika and gave it a new popularity. The young ask, How was the earth before? Beautiful, I say. Grey clouds unfold over the river. A cart swam by. Nature is at peace. Spring forward, fall back. Daylight saving, repeating. Bring changes this spring. Stars were bright when they came. Now dimmed, obscured. Pollution's haze. The distant mountains are reflected in the eye of the dragonfly. The rays of rising sun, people clinging to boats, saving their lives. The land is in a constant state of birth, giving life to all who live on earth. A funny fluffy cloud, making faces in the sky. Whoosh! It fades away. A great video indeed. Moving on to our next event, we have the students of class 10th on eco criticism. Environment today. Eco criticism is the new concept. Hmm, eco criticism? What is this? Hmm, I'll search this on YouTube. I definitely find something about it. Mm, this video is looking nice. Let me watch this. Literature, a form of expression of love, hatred, anger, fear, relations, feelings, a way of expressing, oblivion, life and afterlife. It has much more to relate with. 
In comparison with other political forms of criticism, there has been relatively little dispute over the moral and philosophical aims of eco-criticism, although its scope has broadened from nature writing, romantic poetry, canonical literature to take in film, television, theatre, animal stories, architecture. It is any theory that is committed to effecting change by analysing the function of thematic, artistic, social, historical, ideological and theoretical. Dear viewers, we encash this opportunity to introduce you to a new branch of literature which deals in environment and issues related to it. One of the eco critics is here with us to explain the positive impact of nature on an individual. One of the perfect examples of enunciating positivity of nature on humans is A Thing of Beauty by John Keats. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness but still will keep a bore quiet for us and asleep. Nature performs major miracles for us every day, which is greatly depicted by Henry Howard in his poem The Golden Gifts That Nature He Gave Us. It provides us with various goods. Don't we all like to go to hill stations? And what is the thing we enjoy the most? Yes, the beauty of nature, the greenery, the mountain peaks covered with clouds. So beyond physical goods, the natural world provides less tangible but just as important gifts in terms of beauty, art and spirituality. The beauty of nature is beautifully depicted in the poem I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. It also influences culture, symbology and folklore. We celebrate various festivals which have natural significance. Don't we feel fresh and relaxed when we are in a park? Yes, because nature also has healing effect. In the poem, The Gladness of Nature by William Cullen Bryant, he represents the joy that nature can give to an individual. It reduces anger, fear and stress and increases pleasant feelings. Nature serves all the positivity, but we the eco-critics have analyzed what we have been repaying. Our planet Earth, the only known planet to have life as of now, belongs to billions of species of living organisms. But the only dominant species are humans. Gifted with brilliant brains and the ability to create and use resources, Humans should have made this world a better place to live for all, but instead, the only thing humans care about is themselves. In his poem on killing a tree, Gief Patel sarcastically defames humans who cut trees for their own gains. They make their lives easier and fun at the cost of the discomfort of other beings and deterioration of nature. Humans act like the earth, its resources belong to them. One example is humans hunting and capturing innocent animals for their own gains. Tiger in a zoo. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. This poem by Leslie Norris elaborates the helplessness of a tiger who is trapped in a zoo. In the poem Fire and Ice, Robert Frost says that the world will either end in fire or ice representing human desire and hatred respectively. The poem states how humans, in the influence of their own emotions, can destroy the world by misusing resources and destroying nature. The existence of human beings is also in danger today, but due to their own actions. They have already destroyed the nature and homes of animals, and now they are destroying themselves. The coronavirus, global warming, and countless other things are the creation of humans, one way or the other. Humans are a threat to themselves and to the nature. Whatever we may do, positivity the nature has, it keeps on going by and by, and nature always comes up as a healing power to us. So, it becomes our prime responsibility to do our bit. Environment supports the dynamic aspect of life in its inhabiting form of life which leads to formation, development, maturity, birth and death. 
it would have been impossible to survive on earth had we not had such a supportive environment however with the surge of urbanization over last few years we have seen a steady decline in the environment around us the environment is capable of healing and all we need is to give it a push in right direction in order to save environment nature is one of the poetry's oldest subject it is ever present and beautiful the rudiments of eco criticism are found in the poetry of alfred tennyson in the poem the flower he says read my little fable he that run may read most can raise flowers now or all have got the seed and some are pretty enough and some are poor indeed and now again people call it but a weed and many more poets like william wordsworth coleridge keats shelley clear and other poets of the romantic age literally responses to environmental concern are as old as the issues themselves for sure we understand our roles and responsibilities and have contributed to we know that nature has given us so much to us that it's difficult to return but we are trying to give nature some gifts in the form of conserving resources using new technologies avoid nature exploitation and many more nature gave us a lot and now it's our turn to show nature that yes we are grateful to it and we are trying our best to protect it many poets have been writing poems and write-ups to inspire and motivate people to save our mother nature among all of the famous poets there are william wordsworth who has written lines written in early spring in which he says that if this belief from heaven be sent if such be nature's holy plan have i not reason to leave it what man has made of man rabindranath tagore's book a life of intimacy with nature explores his quest to nurture the delicate relationship between the human and natural realms of existence consciously and consistently the piece of literature by rabindranath tagore beautifully sums up his views on harmony between a man and the nature trees are the earth's endless efforts to speak to the listening heaven humanity is not completely over yet there are people who still take steps to save our environment there will always be eco critics who will keep on celebrating nature through their writings and will keep on contributing by spreading awareness on a person's initiative to save nature what supports us spreading awareness is a parallel wing sej society is a group of people with one aim and the society for environment is the sej society of environmental journalists is a non-profit journalism organization created by and for journalists who report environment topics in the news media sej's mission is to strengthen the quality reach and viability of journalism across all media to advance public understanding of environmental issues sej was founded in 1990 by a small group of award winning journalists including reporters editors and producers working for the philadelphia inquirer usa today and national geographic it has its headquarters in washington dc at present sej's membership includes about 1500 journalists and has a board of directors including two people with indian origin namely meera subramanyam and maya kapoor we thank sej for providing us with such great aspect of journalism let us not utilize our environment as an inheritance rather take care of it as a possession for generations to come this was your host manya please like subscribe and share our channel we the eco critics stay safe stay healthy now that was an interesting and creative video
Now moving on further, here we have a talk show created by the students of class 9th and 10th. Hello and welcome everyone, your own show, The Teddy Talks. First of all guys, thank you for sending your pretty good response for our last episode, which was related to fight against Corona. And according to your wish list, in our today's program, we are going to talk about the threats for the environment and the ways in which can be adopted by us to save it. So to seek some information on how to create a balance in our ecosystem, we are having a panel of experts with us, Ms. Panwa and Mr. Singh. Ms. Panwa is the owner of Satpuda Foundation, an NGO which works for the upliftment of the environment. And Mr. Singh is the senior secretary of the environmental department. Namaste. Welcome both of you, ma'am and sir. Ma'am and sir, before asking any questions to you, I would like to share some information about today's topic. Warm greetings. This is Sabhagya Agarwal presenting a report on environment. In this report, we would have a look at our environment through various parameters. Our planet has witnessed enormous degradation and exploitation over the year. And the present condition of temperature is a great threat for us. Due to the hole in ozone layer, our earth is turning into a life furnace. The Australian's bushfire and the rising temperature of America West reaching 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an alarming situation for us. As we can see in the graph, rising temperature is beating all records in a cold country, United Kingdom as well. Melting of glaciers is also a phenomena which is identified by the experts. Melting glaciers at the threat of increasing sea level which can lead to disaster. If we talk about the depletion rate of water, it is also a major source of concern. We are burning our own hands by wasting a life-sustaining resource. As we can clearly see in the graph, withdrawal of water from 1950 to 1995 clearly shows upward trend. Billion gallons of water is used by us in different different ways. Amid rising concerns, some stability was seen. But in 2021, we are still depleting our water table. Then, on the other hand, if we talk about the effects of environmental change, it is really affecting our animals as their death rates are increasing. Our wildlife is paying the price of our human greed. It's drowning and dying in human filth. The increasing death rates somehow notifying us towards our duties. A lot of animals like wolves, leopards and tigers are dying due to our greed. Not this much, over 900 species become extinct and the probability of extinction has increased by 10% more over the decade due to climate change and habitat loss. We can still save some species like mammals, birds and water animals who are at the edge of extinction by doing our duties well. More than 37,400 species are threatened with extinction. On the other hand, the humans are keep increasing the garbage. According to the data, India generates more than 62 million tons of garbage and urban India is the world's third largest garbage producer in which 60% of garbage comes from top 10 metropolitan cities and unfortunately only 19% of collected garbage is treated. In order of creating garbage, unfortunately our own Delhi secured first position. Although the government is setting up W2E plants, means waste to energy plants, but there are many problems in setting them up. They are extremely expensive and they release dioxins for ants so they can cause health issues. Especially the overuse of plastic which is a non-biodegradable substance. There are a lot of man-made activities which are polluting and killing our environment. It's all about today's report. Thank you. So, according to this report, the disasters which are happening due to the man-made activities. So, sir, as an environmentalist, do you think a revolution is needed to bring a change in the thought process of the people? It's really a meaningful question as it's an alarming situation for us and somewhere we need to decide what we really want to give to our future generation 
a world with pollution, diseases, anxiety, stress, or a sort of relief, healthy environment to live in. And obviously, our choice is clear. So the environmental movements have to be checked, noticed, and no doubt modified. A number of initiatives including reducing pollution, conserving natural resources, preventing endangered species from being extinct, and shielding the natural area from diseases or overdevelopment. According to research, it shows that states with strong green voices have significantly have emi uh, lower emissions of the gases that drive global warming. A very nice answer, sir. Mm -hmm. So, next question. So, sir, according to you, is our planet becoming inhabitable at a rapid rate? Well, Mr. Hirsch, I think you yourself are well aware of the answer. We all are destroying nature and exploiting it. Very soon it will be inhabitable. Even increasing greenhouse effect and human instigated climate change is making our planet inhabitable. There are many countries which had never gone through the high temperature but now the condition is totally opposite. According to WHO, heat waves are considered among the most dangerous of natural hazards but rarely receive adequate attention because their death tolls and destruction are, are not always immediately obvious. You will be seeing data from 1998 to 2017, more than 1,66,000 people, yes, it's true, around the world died because of heat waves. Recently, historic heat waves have been linked to thousands of deaths in Pacific Northwest and Canada. Now, I would like to seek some information from you, ma'am. As you're running an NGO which has been working for the same cause since long, that is, how to save the environment? So according to you ma'am, what is the biggest environmental threat today? First of all, thank you so much Mr. Hirsch for giving me this opportunity. We are associated with this cause since 2010 and now around 1000 people including youngsters, retired military persons and even school going kids as well are working with us on this platform to resolve this issue of saving environment. We do our best to educate people how to save or not to pollute environment by their little effort. Especially in slums, we try to manage hygiene, making them understand the importance of being healthy and the ways which have to be adopted by them. Now, if we talk about environmental threat, so according to me, the biggest environmental threat I get is the depletion of resources. Water shortage occurs not only due to the shortage of its resources, it's because of the careless overuse of it. So we need to educate people for the same. Another threat if we talk about is the increase of pollution. All the jobs which we do every day are also somehow responsible for land, water and air pollution. Pollution has been considered as a prominent threat in the Global Risk Report 2018. So we need to be responsible towards it and make our country the best. Next question to you ma'am. Ma'am, through a survey in India, it has been reported that we do have some fake NGOs which are collecting money through a different ways but instead they are not doing the work. So the corruption is increased in our country. So what kind of measures accordingly to you have to be taken? There hmm. are such a great ways to put a full stop hmm. on these fake agencies. First of all, the government should take a lead. They should form a committee who looks after all these things, like measuring their work, providing license, checking the progress of the work, their early targets, monitoring growth, and the campaigns led by them. Even sometimes, government should reward them, so that others would also be encouraged. Great information from both of you sir and ma'am. Dear audience, we will be joining right back after this short break. So stay connected. Can you throw your mobile on the road? What? Are you serious? How can you throw my mobile phone on the, the road? It's too expensive. I will not throw it. Then why have you thrown the garbage here? Oh, sorry, sorry. I will not do it again. 
Can you squander your money? Then why are you wasting these valuable resources? Can you scratch or hurt yourself? Why would I be scratching myself and giving a pain? Then why are you giving pain to these plants? Welcome back to the show. We are getting a really great response. And now it's time for the audience question. So we are having some of the callers here. So our first caller is a student studying in Rajasthan. I wanted to ask a question that is really a common man responsible for the melting of glaciers or it is a natural process. It's really interesting and common query which I usually receive. Human activities. Yes. Only human activities are the root of this phenomena. Specifically since the industrial revolution, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions have raised temperature even higher in the poles. And as a result, glaciers are rapidly melting, carving off into the sea and retreating on land. And if this would be continued, then obviously one day all the glacier would melt and then world would be underwater. But somewhere we are ignoring this. A second caller is from a business field staying in Bokaro. Industrial waste is the biggest contributor to the destruction of the ozone layer and polluting our rivers. Can it be neutralized in any of the other ways? Anything can be neutralized if proper government regulations and better control mechanism are followed then easily it can be neutralized and also by stop ocean dumping, stop environmental dumping, reduce consumption level and by reusing and recycling the waste. Now we are having our last caller here. She is a social worker. Hello everyone. My question is that is the half-hearted government endeavor sufficient to counter the threat to our ecosystem? Being an active member of an NGO, I would like to answer this question. Don't you think it's not only the government job to look after the environment or to clean the city. I believe that each and every citizen should take a step forward and fulfill their responsibilities for it. Especially our children should be educated for this same. We all should work against this problem. So here I am having some videos for you all the way we can help our environment and can save our mother nature.
Thanks for providing such information. I am hoping that today's session has remained fruitful for all of us. No doubt, our natural environment makes human life possible and our cultural environment help define who we are. So it is therefore essential that we should take a lead, make our ways to have a well-balanced, eco-friendly and healthy atmosphere around us. Thank you to our respected guests and our lovely audience. We'll catch you next week with another relevant talk. So till the time, stay healthy, stay connected. What a wonderful performance it was. Such an exceptional display of talent by all the students. Now one thing we would like you all to remember is that the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Now we would like to conclude the event by thanking everyone for their time, efforts and valuable insights.